Occupational Hearing Loss, Wikipedia Article Audio Occupational hearing loss is hearing loss that occurs as a result of occupational hazards, such as excessive noise and ototoxic chemicals. OL is a prevalent occupational concern in various work environments worldwide. Organizations such as the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health and the Mine Safety and Health Administration work with employers and workers to reduce or eliminate occupational hearing hazards through a hierarchy of hazard controls. OL is one of the most common work-related illness in the United States. Occupational hearing hazards include industrial noise, and exposure to various ototoxic chemicals. Combined exposure to both industrial noise and ototoxic chemicals may cause more damage than either one would in isolation. Many chemicals have not been tested for ototoxicity, so unknown threats may exist. Background Causes Noise exposure Ototoxic chemical exposure Prevention Hierarchy of controls Engineering controls Administrative controls Personal protection Other initiatives History a 2016 study by Niash found that the mining sector had the highest prevalence of hearing impairment at 17%, followed by the construction sector and the manufacturing sector. The public safety sector had the lowest rate of hearing impairment, at 7%. Personal protective equipment, administrative controls, and engineering controls can all work to reduce exposure to noise and chemicals, either by providing the worker with protection such as earplugs, or by reducing the noise at the source or limiting the time or level of exposure. OL is defined as any type of hearing loss, i.e. sensory neural, conductive, or mixed hearing loss that occurs due to hazardous characteristics of a work environment. The hearing loss can range in severity from mild to profound. Hazards of a work environment that can result in all include excessive noise, ototoxic chemicals, or physical trauma. All caused by excessive exposure to noise is also known as noise-induced hearing loss. Noise exposure combined with ototoxic chemical exposure can result in more damage to hearing. OL caused by physical trauma may include foreign bodies in the ear, vibration, barotrauma, or head injury. OL, as well as hearing loss in general, can cause negative secondary social and emotional effects that can impact quality of life. Within the United States of America, Approximately 10 million people have NIHL. Over twice that number are occupationally exposed to dangerous noise levels. Hearing loss accounted for a sizable percentage of occupational illness in 2007, at 14% of cases. United States organizations such as OSHA, NIOSH, and MSHA are working to understand the causes of OL and how it can be prevented while providing regulations and guidelines to help protect the hearing of workers in all occupations. Exposure to noise can cause vibrations able to cause permanent damage to the ear. Both the volume of the noise and the duration of exposure can influence the likelihood of damage. Sound is measured in units called decibels, which is a logarithmic scale of sound levels that corresponds to the level of loudness that an individual's ear would perceive. Because it is a logarithmic scale, even small incremental increases in decibels correlate to large increases in loudness, and an increase in the risk of hearing loss. Sounds above 80 dB have the potential to cause permanent hearing loss. The intensity of sound is considered too great and hazardous if someone must yell in order to be heard. 
Ringing in the ears upon leaving work is also indicative of noise that is at a dangerous level. Farming, machinery work, and construction are some of the many occupations that put workers at risk of hearing loss. OSHA's current permissible exposure limit for workers is an average of 90 dB over an 8-hour workday. They also use a 5 dB exchange rate, where an increase in 5 dB for a sound corresponds to the amount of time workers may be exposed to that particular source of sound being halved. For example, workers cannot be exposed to a sound level of 95 dB for more than 4 hours per day, or to sounds at 100 dB for more than 2 hours per day. Employers who expose workers to 85 dB or more for 8-hour shifts are required to provide hearing exams and protection, monitor noise levels, and provide training. Sound level meters and dosimeters are two types of devices that are used to measure sound levels in the workplace. Dosimeters are typically worn by the employee to measure their own personal sound exposure. Other sound level meters can be used to double-check dosimeter measurements, or used when dosimeters cannot be worn by the employees. They can also be used to evaluate engineering controls aimed at reducing noise levels. Some recent studies suggest that some smartphone applications may be able to measure noise as precisely as a Type 2 SLM. Chemically induced hearing loss is a potential result of occupational exposures. Certain chemical compounds may have ototoxic effects. Exposure to organic solvents, heavy metals, and asphyxiants such as carbon monoxide can all cause hearing loss. These chemicals can be inhaled, ingested, or absorbed through the skin. Damage can occur to either the inner ear or the auditory nerve. Both noise and chemical exposures are common in many industries, and can both contribute to hearing loss simultaneously. Damage may be more likely or more severe if both are present. Industries in which combinations of exposures may exist include construction, fiberglass, metal manufacturing, and many more. Certain medications may also have the potential to cause hearing loss. It is estimated that over 22 million workers are exposed to dangerous noise levels, and 10 million are exposed to solvents that could potentially cause hearing loss every year, with an unknown number exposed to other ototoxic chemicals. All is preventable, but currently the interventions to prevent NIHL are complex. A 2017 Cochrane review found that hearing loss prevention programs revealed that stricter legislation might reduce noise levels. Hearing protection devices, such as earmuffs and earplugs can reduce noise exposure to safe levels, but, instructions are needed on how to put plugs into the ears correctly to achieve potential attenuation. Giving workers information on their noise exposure levels by itself was not shown to decrease noise. Engineering solutions might lead to similar noise reduction as that provided by hearing protection. Better evaluation of the noise exposures resulting from engineering interventions is needed, as most of the available information is limited to observations in laboratory conditions. Overall, the effects of hearing loss prevention programs are unclear. Better use of hearing protection as part of a program but does not necessarily protect against hearing loss. The review concluded that in order to prevent NIHL in the workplace the quality of the implementation of prevention programs affects results, and that better quality of studies, especially in the field of engineering controls, and better implementation of legislation are needed. While the 2017 systematic review concluded there is a lack of conclusive evidence it highlighted that this should not be interpreted as evidence of lack of effectiveness. The implications is that further research could affect conclusions reached. 
The hierarchy of controls provides a visual guide to the effectiveness of the various workplace controls set in place to eliminate or reduce exposure to occupational hazards, including noise or ototoxic chemicals. The hierarchy includes the following from most effective to least effective. Engineering controls is the highest in the hierarchy of risk reduction methods when elimination of the hazard is not possible. These types of controls typically involve making changes in equipment or other changes to minimize the level of noise that reaches a worker's ear. They may also involve measures such as barriers between the worker and the source of the noise, mufflers, regular maintenance of the machinery, or substituting quieter equipment. Examples of noise control strategies adopted in the workplace can be seen among the winners of the Safe and Sound Excellence in Hearing Loss Prevention Awards. Administrative Control, Behind Engineering Control is the next best form of prevention of noise exposure. They can either reduce the exposure to noise, or reduce the decibel level of the noise itself. Limiting the amount of time a worker is allowed to be around an unsafe level of noise exposure, and creating procedures for operation of equipment that could produce harmful levels of noise are both examples of administrative controls. Elimination or reduction of the source of noise or chemical exposure is ideal, but when that is not possible or adequate, wearing personal protective equipment such as earplugs or earmuffs can help reduce the risk of hearing loss due to noise exposure. PPE should be a last resort and not be used in substitution for engineering or administrative controls. It is important that workers are properly trained on the use of PPE to ensure proper protection. In addition to the hierarchy of controls, other programs have been created to promote the prevention of hearing loss in the workplace. For example, the Buy Quiet program was created to encourage the purchase of quieter tools and machinery in the workplace. Additionally, the Safe and Sound Award was created to recognize organizations that excel in preventing occupational hearing loss. Occupational hearing loss is a very present industrial issue that has been noticed since the Industrial Revolution. As industrial society continues to grow, this issue is becoming increasingly detrimental due to the exposure of chemicals and physical objects. Millions of employees have been affected by occupational hearing loss, especially in industry. Industrialized countries see most of these damages as they result in both economic and living problems. Within the United States of America alone, 10 of the 28 million people that have experienced hearing loss related to noise exposure. Rarely do workers express concerns or complaints regarding occupational hearing loss. In order to gather relevant information, workers who have experienced loud work environments are questioned regarding their hearing abilities during everyday activities. When analyzing OHP, it is necessary to consider family history, hobbies, recreational activities, and how they could play a role in a person. S. Hearing loss. In order to test hearing loss, audiometers are used to and are adjusted to American National Standards Institute regulations. The Occupation and Safety Health Association of the United States of America requires a program that conserves hearing when noise levels are greater than 85 dB. This program includes 1. Monitoring to assess and record noise levels. 2. Periodic audiometry. 3. Noise control. 4. Education and record keeping. Elimination, complete removal of the hazard, substitution, replacement the offers a smaller risk, engineering controls physical changes to reduce exposure, administrative controls, changes in work procedures or training, 
personal protective equipment, individual equipment to reduce exposure, e.g. earplugs.